This is an old drawing I wanted to recreate. First, I sketched the idea in Procreate, which is an iterative process for me. My process starts with a rough sketch to figure out the proportions, and often I will look at some reference photographs or art pieces while sketching. Then I start to trace the sketch on a new layer to get my outlines. This process is repeated several times until I am happy with the result. The speed of the video will be shown in the bottom left corner throughout this video. Once I finished the sketch, I printed it and I wanted to get down light basic colors using a Lucas watercolor travel set. The dragon's fur was kind of important to me. At some point I remembered Falkor from The Never Ending Story, which instantly gave me a sense of nostalgia. So I tried to create this white looking fur. Also, I found a beautiful picture of an albino deer, which I was using as a reference. Maybe this could be some sort of Gandalf thing. I definitely think not all of these dragons would have white fur but only the ones that are extremely powerful after overcoming quests they were faced in the past. I also imagined that these dragons would have a special bond with the elves inhabiting the forests and individual dragons would inhabit shrines specifically built for them by the elves. I had to let the fur parts dry before I could concentrate on them once more. So I focused on other parts of the drawing in the meantime. For the elven warrior on top of the dragon, I considered that they might probably use natural materials for their armory as well as for building materials and other everyday stuff. Since we are talking about mystical creatures, I also imagined them to combine these materials with some sort of magic. For example, I thought of the rope wrapped around the dragon's body, that this might be something made out of wines enhanced with some sort of spell to give the rope more stability. I love drawing tiny details, although a larger area would give me more space to experiment with colors. So that is kind of a trade-off. I have gone over the fur very often, because I really wanted to build up this fluffy look. It took forever in real time, but it also was very relaxing and gave me a lot of time to think about these creatures. Since I stretched the dragon idea quite a bit in this drawing, I wondered what their magical skill might be. For sure they wouldn't spit fire. Telepathic skills like putting enemy soldiers to sleep seemed a better fit for these creatures. Once again, I had to wait until the colors were dry, so I started to paint the sky. Painting the sky with watercolors, or even better, space, with watercolors is so much fun. There is something very satisfying in seeing the pigments enter the surface of the paper and steadily sinking in, creating patterns on their own. Factually, this has to be a rather cloudy sky, because if you consider a clear sky, it's really just a huge block of color gradient, without any edges in it. Unfortunately, I did not feel like my watercolor skill level is high enough to pull the original idea off. Originally, I had the idea in mind that the dragon could fly through a cloud in the middle of a rather clear sky. But with drawing, it is like with every other skill. As you progress to learn something, you also learn to evaluate your own skills better and can adapt your art piece to the level of challenge you want to face at this day. And you start to find solutions based on your skills. In this regard, drawing is very similar to programming in my experience. Once I was somewhat comfortable with how the sky looked like, I went back to who would have thought that the fur. <laughs> At some point I also realized that this all might get too dark to still resemble the body of an albino deer. I struggled because I wanted to indicate the shadows many white hairs stacked on top of each other would cast. Nevertheless, the process was satisfying as hell, 
So I continue to go down this road. And as I, I realized deep inside, I even stopped filming at a short period of time, where I still continued working on the fur, when I did something we call Verschlimmbessern in German. <laughs> it is a combination of the words Verbessern, meaning to improve, and Verschlimmern, which means to make worse. So you literally might translate it to inverse proof or improverse. But I heard several times that neologisms are not as a big of a thing in the English language as they are in the German language. So please correct me if improverse can never be an English term. <laughs> The idea behind this expression is that you try to improve your work up to a point where you actually make it worse. Maybe I should also add that this is not an official term in the German language to my knowledge, but rather a slang term. I felt like the fur at the end looked way too orange brown. So I felt like the only thing that could save my vision for this painting was to go over the fur with Lots of white. And you know what? I did. Basically, I went over the whole body of the dragon with white several times. When I started doing that, the effects were rather subtle. I tried to push through it because I still hoped it would get me to a place where I'd be happy with the result. The basic question that inspired me to draw this was how far could you stretch this whole dragon idea? I tried to mix elements of a deer for the body parts and antlers, a pigeon for the wings and a bull for the tail. Do you think this still resembles a dragon or do you think this creature deserves another name? Let me know in the comments. Suddenly, the fur appeared to look in a way I also aimed for. So that made me really happy and gave me some motivation to continue my quest of drawing hundreds of tiny lines that I would smudge around a little bit while it's still wet. And who would have thought? If you throw lots and lots of layers of color on the paper, it will look layered at some point. <laughs> Painting the fur at the head and tail was the hardest for me. I thought that the hair there should be the shortest and finest and to achieve this preciseness I certainly have to practice more. Luckily I was kind of happy with the final result. I think this is mainly because fur consists of chunks of hairs, so you can get away without drawing microscopic details. For the legs, I felt like smudging some white on top of what I already laid down on paper was enough. Specifically for the body parts in the back, I tried to use less details. Another thing about the tail, I thought that it could be really cool if the tip of the tail could be like an obsidian spearhead, because there are no spikes on the back of the dragon and somehow there needs to be an impression of how Imba this creature is. But this time I mainly focused on the fur, as you might have noticed. And I am aware that if I would put more time into other details, my art would look more polished. But very often I rather make many drawings instead of only a few very perfect ones. How do you feel about quality versus quantity in your crafting hobbies? I wanted the antlers to have also a rather beige color because I hoped in this way they would stand out against the background. And still I felt like I could get a little more out of the looks of the fur. The underlying colors only should show the shadows of underlying white hairs once I was finished. And I warned you, it took me forever to do this. Forever, 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 ever, forever, ever, forever, never seems that long. Until you decide to draw an animal having lots of fur. Speaking about forever, I thought of the bond between the elves and these dragons to be very old. I imagine that maybe at some point in history they were simply coexisting in the forests. Until one day the forests all over the world were a danger 
so they had to team up to save the woods. Thinking in fantasy terms, probably it was some evil force sucking life out of nature. <clears throat> Gigantic capitalist companies. <clears throat> But on the other hand, this felt very stereotypical, so I might give this backstory some more thought at another point. But this story is the reason why the elves and the dragons have this special kind of bond. When I was finally happy with the fur, I decided to take care of other parts of the drawing, like the wings. So first they got another layer of color before I moved on to the saddle. Still, I choose the colors to stand for natural materials like leather. I have a slight obsession with pockets, but I guess it is the result of years and years of the drama as someone wearing female clothes, of never finding clothing items with pockets large enough to fit anything. I wanted these incredibly beautiful patterns on the stacked feathers you'll find in wings. So I did everything to achieve this. Again, I had a beautiful reference image I would use to determine how to tackle this. I often pick a paper towel to softly press it against freshly painted areas because A. You get this wonderful fainted effect and B. I am such an impatient woman and this shortens the period you have to wait until the paper is somewhat dry again. A lot of the details were subtle in the end but I really enjoyed painting them and I feel like I learned quite a bit about fur and feathers or rather wings by drawing this. The shape of a single feather is basically an oval. In the middle of this oval, there is a horn-like structure made out of keratin, which will probably appear lighter. And outwards from this structure in the middle, you will have many tiny hair. And these hair might be more fluffy at the bottom part and more stiff at the top part of the feather. And they might even vary in color quite a bit. And for a wing, these individual feathers would stack on top of each other to create a larger structure. But of course a wing consists of more than one of these structures and so on. I guess you get the idea. Towards the end I wanted to soften some of the edges in the sky. I decided to paint the top of the saddle blue because it fitted the color scheme of the painting quite well. It might be inconsistent with the natural materials though, since blue is not a color you would find in nature often. Lastly, I fixed the hair of the elf a bit. In the very end, once I was happy with the whole thing, I decided to get my flat iron and iron the painting on my desk. Because why not? So this is the finished painting. I hope you guys liked it and if you have any questions or opinions about these dragons, I would love to read about them in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel. It would help a lot. Thank you and okay, bye!